Hello, my name is Razi Alkane and I welcome you to another voice actor spotlight. Usually I do the spotlight first, then I send it to the actor in hopes to get a bite, then I ask for the interview. But I met David Kay at TFCon in 2023, and within seconds he made me feel welcome, listened to my sales pitch for an interview, and I got an email from his publicist within a week. I interviewed him not long after, and I confess I had tried to work on a spotlight about him, but got so intimidated by the sheer amount of work he did. He covered every medium in the business, from radio to on-camera, trailers, video games, and of course cartoons. Let me assure you that whatever I present today, he did 10 times that amount or more. Born as David V. Hope on October 14, 1964 in Peterborough, Ontario, I expected David to be in all the school plays in his early years, but surprisingly he was in sport. Well, not so surprisingly, he was in great shape when I met him at TFCon, but in 8th grade he did have a non-speaking role in the play, but he secretly really wished he had something to say. He hung out with the drama people because he identified with them more than the other groups, because they were proud of who they were and they weren't afraid to show it. David found them courageous because going up on a stage in front of your classmates in high school? That takes a lot of guts. David's first gig was on a Peterborough radio station when he was 17, and soon after he enrolled at the Loyalist College in Belleville for their broadcasting program. But David couldn't wait to leave home and make his way into the business. He left right after college and always sought the bigger market, the next bigger opportunity. He started as an on-air talent on the morning show at a Brockville, Ontario station, then went working at a country radio station in London, Ontario, finally moving to Vancouver, BC in 1989, still working as an on-air talent on CKLG. At roughly the same time, the Vancouver animation boom was happening, and that's when he got exposed to the business he would be known for. He transitioned from radio to on-camera, stage and voice acting. He told me that at the time he would often cringe at seeing himself on camera and that what really resonated with him was working behind the mic where he could create characters. So he focused on that and created a ton of characters over the years. This actor did so many things that he was even able to build 28 hours in one day at some point. That's a lot of work. His biggest hero was Don LaFontaine, the legendary film trailer voice, whom David met and became friends with. He's the one that suggested to David that he should be doing trailers as well, and David found success there too. Speaking of success, let's take a look at David's more popular characters, because if I listed everything he did, this would be a three season series. On camera, he did some work in movies and series, notably two appearances on The X-Files, Happy Gilmore as a reporter, The Sentinel as Agent Danforth, Dead Man's Gun as Richard Bevington, two episodes of Viper, Martian Child as Andy, and so much more. But very recently, he worked on the MCU's Eternals movie as the voice of Arisham. Our universe is a constant exchange of energy. David didn't even know what it was at first, then realized who this was for, who was going to be the director, who he'd be playing, then worked to create that voice for the character, but still expected to be replaced by a bigger name. An infinite cycle of creation and destruction. That's when he shared that he never gets excited about a role until he sees his name on the screen, that it's a done deal. To him it was an opportunity to work with Chloe Zhao, the director and co-writer of the movie. A week before the movie came out, he read an article mentioning he was involved, so he thought that maybe they had kept his voice. Then he went to see the movie and heard himself, and was genuinely surprised they kept him in the movie. I'm not. It is a side effect of the emergence. David is also involved with HBO's Last Week with John Oliver, doing various voiceover and announcer work since 2014. In cartoons and video games, his first role was for G.I. Joe as General Hawk. General Hawk, at your service, sir. And after that, well, he's credited for 602 roles from 220 titles on BehindTheVoiceActor.com, so let's check out the most iconic. For cartoons, I have to start with Beast Wars Transformers, where he voiced the irreplaceable Megatron. How delicious, yes. When it comes to most remember villain performance, I'd put him up there with Mark Hamill's Joker and James Earl Jones' Darth Vader. I mean, that version of Megatron was so poetic and majestic that it makes him doubly terrifying as a villain. I am that which is, which was, and is yet to come. And you will know my name is Megatron when I lay my vengeance upon you. David reprised this character for the spin-off Beast Machine. Four million years of Transformer civilization. And now it is merely a ruler. Adding Noble to his repertoire. Of course, I can't interface with it as long as I'm trapped in this 
cursed organic form. And again in the video game Beast Wars Transmetal. You lose. And once more for the TV show Robot Chicken. Yes, I may have PTSD, but that is a f***ing maximal. But that's not the only Megatron he did. He did another version for the Unicron trilogy and the 2004 video game. Give it back immediately, or you shall suffer the consequences. He's also known for his portrayal of Charles Xavier's and Apocalypse in X-Men Evolution, giving a new meaning to the phrase arguing with yourself. The human race does not need your help. <sighs> Since when has mankind ever known what it needs? He has a lot of fans because of his portrayal of Seshumaru in the series Inuyasha and its spin-off movies and video games, including Yashahimi Princess Half Demon. Chakin, listen to me. Stay well back. David did a lot of dubbing for anime and series and movies such as the franchise Ranma and a Half, where he played Suntendo, Gambling King, and a few others. Ronin Warriors as the Ancient One, Dragon Ball Z as Rico. Mobile Suit Gundam Wing as Tres Kushre Nanada, but also Mega Man Anti Warriors as Proto Man and Thunder Man, which he reprised both for Access. And of course, he's Batu from the renowned Ghost in the Shell franchise for their two installments of Standalone Complex. Boma, I'm almost at your location. It is also a known fact that David is the only voice actor to have been both a Megatron and an Optimus Prime, when he took the role of a younger Optimus in Transformers Animated. Do not engage that thing yet. Keep your scanners peeled for Decepticons. On that show, we also did Lugnut. Silence, Blitzwing! I did not follow this beacon halfway across the galaxy for dancing lessons. Grimlock? Mm hmm? Me, Grimlock, forget. Cars and trucks, bad. Plus 17 others. David also reprised Optimus and Lugnut for the video game. He also did 30 characters on regular show, another 30 on Ben 10 Omniverse, and 16 characters on Avengers Assemble, including Jarvis, Vision, and Baron Zemo. But one role he did that people really love is Clank from the famous Ratchet and Clank franchise. She might possess information about what Nefarious is planning. He did this role for about 22 times, if you include the movie and cameos in other games. He was Tony Stark, Iron Man, and Fantastic Four World's Greatest Heroes. Please come right in, though you know this is a very high-tech building. We have things called doors. And took over the role of Grandpa Max Tennyson since the 2016 reboot of Ben 10 and doing 90 other characters. That's job security right there. And one role I really like is for the new He-Man and the Masters of the Universe where he portrayed Cringer in Battle Cat. Being a family. As you can guess, this is only a grain of sand on the beach that is his career. He's simply amazing. He works so much that he has a custom-made recording station in his car that allows him to record on the go. On the go. How awesome is that? He's one of the greatest voice actors. And when he's asked for advice, he says the best one you can give is actually to be the best at who you are first. Then you can create characters that will feel real. In the end, when David started doing this, he wanted to have fun every day. And that's what voice acting brought to him at first. Then he got a whole lot more. While interviewing him, he mentioned that sometimes meeting fans at conventions can be very emotional. Like a fan that saved all his money and flew all the way from Hungary to see him. Or the Special Olympic weightlifting champion that kept calling him his hero. He said that those experiences are rewarding and very humbling. And despite the long line to see him at conventions, or the number of people who call him their favorite voice actor, or those fans so determined to meet him that they spend all their time and effort to do so, David still thinks of himself as just David from Peterborough. I hope you've enjoyed this brief overview of David Kay's career. If you did, please like, subscribe and hit the bell. Also leave a comment, I love reading those. Keep coming back, I have more on the way. And remember, nothing in life gives you the right to be an asshole. Take care.